Hey guys, my name is Shai. I'm really excited to do this video. It is going to be my most extensive pick a card reading yet. And as you can see, it is a pick a deck. And this is going to be, as you can already tell from the title, <laughs> um, a seven chakra assessment or just a regular seven chakra reading. I'll pull seven cards, one for each of your chakras. And that'll basically let us know how that how each individual chakra is vibrating. Um, some of them will be in a really good state. Some of them will be an area that you can work on clearing and healing. So if you can already tell what deck is for you, it's just numbered one to five. The timestamps will be down below in the description box. And if anybody wants to take a look at each deck more closely, I'm going to take a couple of minutes and hold them up to the camera so you can kind of see the boxes. Um, I'm just going to tell you their names. I'm not going to tell you anything about them just because I don't want to be influencing your choice, you know, with my own ideas. So I will see you in your reading. Okay, deck number one. This is the Guardian of the Night. Deck number two is the Moon Child Tarot. Deck number three, this is the Naked Heart Tarot. Deck number four is Mystic Mondays. Deck number five is Alistair Crowley's Thoth deck. So go ahead and pick your deck. I'm going to be shuffling and drawing the cards on the camera in each individual reading. Okay, this reading is for deck number one, the Guardian of the Night. I'm going to basically be doing these like they are private readings. So I'm going to shuffle on the camera and draw the cards on the camera. And these decks are all pre-shuffled. So I've definitely shuffled this before I turned on the camera. So this is a, an extra shuffle. And... Okay, I'm going to pull all seven cards first and then talk about each of them once they're all out. Root Chakra, card number one, Strength. Number two, Sacral Chakra, Ten of Wands. Solar Plexus, Page of Cups, Heart, Two of Cups, Aw, Throat, Five of Cups, okay. Third Eye, Nine of Wands, and your Crown, Knight of Wands. These all gonna fit. I think we can make these fit.
Okay guys, right away for you, I'm immediately drawn to your heart chakra with the two of cups. Um, when I was pulling these out, I got the sense right away with the ten of wands in your sacral and the page of cups in your solar plexus that you guys are you're essentially too giving. <laughs> um, so I was not at all surprised to get such a... The two of cards in your heart is wonderful, wonderful. It means you guys are overflowing with love and compassion and empathy. And you feel you are really here to connect with others on a very deep level. You guys are super empathic. And in this life journey, there is going to be some kind of soulmate connection for you. Some of you are already with this person. Some of you um, think you are and you're going to find out later that you really weren't um, but definitely this life journey there's going to be at least one person who is your other half like the, the two of cups is that you know twin flame card the lover's card the the soulmate card <laughs> um, you you were here to be part of a pair and that other that other half is at some point in your life going to be coming in for you but if you feel like that is like not quite happening and you don't understand why you're not manifesting this like divine union, this partnership, uh, it's because you're, you're too focused on the other people. Um, and that is causing like disruptions in your own chakra system. You, you guys are actually <laughs> quite grounded, quite like boots on the ground type of people because your root chakra is this strength card. You have the foundation, the skills, the abilities. You, you have everything that you need in order to be successful in life. But <laughs> like, look at this card. It's this little mouse kind of standing up to this serpent. And this, this snake could have no problem swallowing this mouse whole. So I think you guys kind of feel, can kind of feel small, kind of feel like David and Goliath. That's what this card is. But at the same time, you guys are pulling it off. You're winning. You're managing to tame the serpent, to tame the beast, even though you sometimes feel like this little mousy type of person. And I, I think because you sometimes feel small, because you feel like a mouse, because you feel mousy, it leads you to really put others first and to give way too much of yourself. Your, your, your sacral... Ten of Wands, you know, the Ten of Wands is that burden, burden, burden. And look, it's represented here with salmon. <laughs> like, how how self-sacrificing are salmon, you know? They swim, they make, you know, that infamous, that famous journey from the ocean up through the rivers. So many, so many miles inland, up through dams, up mountain streams, past, you know, hungry bears. <laughs> they make it to the place where they were born just to you know, give their offspring life and then they die, <laughs> okay? The salmon are so self-sacrificing and to have this kind of energy represent, representing your sacral center, I would say this is a, this is coming up to let you know that you are giving too much to other people. I, I mean, it, it's not to say that you don't want to be compassionate and giving and loving. Of course, you want to be all, all that and you are all of that, but it, too much energy is getting sucked away from you you're giving away your power you're giving away your energy and it's like killing you <laughs> it's like literally killing you you're like the salmon like they they made it they make it all the way there and then you know they lay their eggs or fertilize the eggs and then they die you don't you, you can't you, you don't need to be doing that <laughs> you need to be finding a more balanced approach how can you be loving and giving and helping others without sacrificing yourself to that like nth degree Okay, and it, it continues on in your solar plexus, Page of Cups. This capybara, so adorable, so cute, so sweet. The Page of Cups is so open and childlike and loving, again with the same theme. But the Page of Cups isn't a particularly like auspicious card to get for your solar plexus. It's a really good card, it's a great energy, but if it's in the solar plexus, this can be somebody who, even though they're an adult you you might still feel like almost like you're an imposter like imposter syndrome like you you know you are an adult you are an adult by your age and maybe you have all the responsibilities of an adult and everything and you're pulling it off but you feel like you're still a child somehow on some level like you you just probably a lot of self-doubt 
a lot of self-doubt uh, and a, a lack of self-confidence. Like you don't quite have enough of something and you feel like other people have it and you don't. You feel like there's something lacking inside of you. So you are, I, I just feel like somebody is like radiating their energy outward, but not from a place of overflow. You're radiating this energy outward almost to defend yourself or to compensate from a perceived lack. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's, it's like, do you, have you guys ever met somebody who is, seems to be like really bubbly, really outgoing, um, really like affectionate and just, but it, it seems like they're compensating for something. It seems like they're overcompensating. It's like they're rating and aiding their own internal feelings outwards because they don't have a more effective way to interface with society. So they're just compensating by being so cute or compensating by, by being so loving. Um, it's like somebody who puts like way too many hearts and stuff when they're texting or somebody who just runs around like giggling and laughing and hugging and smiling. And it, but it, it's a defense mechanism. Do, do you, <laughs> does that make sense? I, I hope, I hope you guys know what I mean. It's kind of like, like that. So, you know, ideally our solar plexus would be a, a more like self-contained state. We want our solar plexus to be attuned to our own self-worth, our own self-sufficiency, our own confidence. You don't like m almost nobody has a balanced um, solar plexus in in my experience. We either it's either like way crippled and somebody has a ton of self confidence issues, or it is way overactivated and people are arrogant and bossy and you know spiteful and hateful and and you know bad in the other direction. And neither of those is good. So it's really difficult to get the solar plexus in um, in balance. But I think what is what might help you guys is getting in tune with masculine energy. And it doesn't matter if you're in a male or female body, um, but the solar plexus is by its very nature, like a masculine center. So, you know, you want to be bringing in, like using your rational mind, using logic to make decisions, um, really doing, making, and also making decisions on your own. If you have a tendency to like ask all your friends and family before you make a decision, try to make that decision on your own. <laughs> um, instead of asking everybody what you should do, um, you know, really standing up for yourself, having really, really, really having the courage to tell people no. I think you guys have a hard time telling people no, because yeah, the, your throat chakra is the five of cups. Having the five of cups in your throat, this is, it's disappointment. It's despair. It is feeling small. It is feeling unheard. And it is just, I don't know if you guys had experiences when you were like young children where maybe you did feel more comfortable speaking up, but then all the adults around you shut you down or maybe the other kids laughed at you. Like, did you have some kind of traumatic experience where speaking up, being yourself or sharing your quirky, unique perspective, did that get you attacked? Like, did that seriously backfire on you at some point? Because that's how we could end, end up in this. And now you're not comfortable um, expressing yourself and you're not you're not comfortable embodying those more masculine energies. Um, yeah, I, I see these as pretty well connected. Like your solar plex, or sorry, your sacral chakra is just so overburdened because your solar plexus and throat centers are not operating very successfully. I think if you could work on your solar plexus and your throat, you know, embodying those masculine energies, okay, embodying your masculine energies, getting more comfortable with your own authority, and your own sovereignty, and your own ability to go against the grain, to tell people no, and to 
swim up river actually <laughs> like the salmon but not swimming up river in order to go and die there swimming up river only when it is necessary you know don't don't go with the crowd don't fall into mob mentality if everyone's going one way and you feel like for you you need to go the other way even if that's disagreeing with like 99 percent of people then go the other way you need to get comfortable really like putting yourself out there getting comfortable with the idea of being ostracized because then you will be able to tell people no and you'll be able to stand up for yourself and then you won't need to be over like i think if those issues are resolved if your sacral i mean your solar plexus and your throat are resolved then your sacral center will naturally come back into balance so i don't think you need to particularly work on your sacral center although of course it's always a good thing to do but working on your solar plexus in your throat i think that's where like the the blocks are where the imbalances are and if you if you work on those two areas the everything else will kind of start to flow more naturally because you, you have a lot of like fiery energy coming in you know your third eyes and nine of wands and your crown is the knight of wands so that wands coming through the way i kind of see this is cosmic energy you know downloads insights information um whatever you want to call it streams down into your crown chakra and then is often kind of processed by the higher mind and your psychic perception in your third eye and you have a lot of messages coming through through your crown knight of wands that is a messenger energy lots and lots of you, you guys are absolutely connected to the cosmos you're connected to the higher realms and that information is coming through but it's like when it hits your third eye it's the nine of wands it is you have a certain amount of defensiveness a feeling like you know it's depicted here as a porcupine porcupine energy almost as if you are fending off the cosmos if you guys want to have a deeper relationship with your guides or with your higher self or with the angels or with ets whatever higher energies you believe in if you want to connect with those more closely i think you're kind of sabotaging yourself you have there's a certain amount of defensiveness here and that is why you're having trouble unlocking more psychic perception and more past life memories all of those you know magical mystical kind of cool experiences we want to have you might be thinking yeah i want it i want it i want it but on some level you're actually defending yourself against it and i think that comes all right back to everything we've been talking about about how you guys are just not feeling comfortable in your own skin not feeling comfortable standing out not feeling comfortable speaking your truth and yeah i think the the simplest way i can sum it up is to say there's a deficiency in your masculine energy a deficiency in the masculine energy working with the the <laughs> working with the divine masculine will really empower your solar plexus and heal your solar plexus allow you to speak your truth right out of your throat and i think that will ripple out and solve these you know ancillary problems with your sacral and with your third eye I just spent a few minutes just kind of tuning into this to see if there was just one piece of advice the universe would like to pass on <laughs> to you guys and it's just repeating what i said before uh practice saying no i think if you if you only take one thing away from this and if you only do one thing or if you're only looking for one piece of advice that one thing is tell people no <laughs> not like you have to say no just to be an asshole you know you say no simply when it's most appropriate for you if somebody is asking you to do something that is not in alignment with your values or is just honestly like way putting you out and massively inconveniencing you or just exhausting you or draining you or if it's something you don't think you should be even be doing don't do it tell them no you guys need to get used to that word no <laughs> so that's your main piece of advice from the universe but don't worry about losing this beautiful magical two of cups energy in your heart you guys are 
your your heart is so beautifully attuned and you are here to be to serve humanity with your empathic abilities and you will actually be able to do that better once you have more masculine energy running through your system and you feel more comfortable saying no and you feel more comfortable speaking out and standing up for yourself that will actually help you be this this angelic empath i just heard <laughs> you, you guys are really here to to help heal the world and to do an important service but i think you need to learn how to heal yourself first and once you are more confident more self-confident and more comfortable standing in your power that is when you will manifest your divine partnership that is when your soulmate comes through that is when your twin flame comes through you will not manifest this partner while you are feeling like the mouse you will not manifest them while you are trying to please them you will not manifest them while you are trying to make yourself small you'll man manifest them once you are fully confident in your own power so i think that's what i'm seeing for you guys good luck on your journey hope to see you guys again soon bye hey deck number two moon child tarot welcome to your reading I am doing these readings just as if they were private readings. Um, I mean, my private readings are a little bit more involved, but I'm going to do the best I can for this collective reading. So I'm going to be shuffling and dealing on the camera. And this deck is pre-shuffled, but I'm going to give it a little bit more of a shuffle here so you guys can see. And then... So give me a couple of moments to draw all the cards and then we will talk about them once I've got them all up. So root chakra, judgment. <laughs> Sacral, six of wands. Solar plexus, two of cups. Heart, Nine of Wands, Throat, Page of Wands, Third Eye, Ten of Pentacles, Ooh. Crown, The Tower. <laughs> Okay, guys, this is pretty intense. You guys are here on Earth with a massive spiritual mission. You guys didn't simply come here to have the human experience. You didn't simply come here just to live your life and learn your lessons and to evolve. I mean, all of that is true. You did come here to do those things, but that's not all you're here for. You came here to massively be of service in a spiritual capacity. You know, you guys might resonate with the words light worker or star seed or mystic or energetic philanthropist. Um, <laughs> I think that that was one of my clients uh, who messaged me with that phrase. So um, if you're watching that, you know who you are. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> and um, I just to get this judgment card in your root chakra is nuts. This particular deck, this is Thoth the scribe of the akashic records and he is standing here this is supposed to be a representation of atlantis i don't know if you guys are connected to atlantis i mean to get this card in your root chakra you guys have really significant past lives in atlantis and maybe those have been coming through for you lately but this judgment card all about the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom and a higher spiritual calling and getting connected with your cosmic purpose so it's really interesting to me that that card came up with the root chakra because it says so much about how important your connection with your body is your connection with the earth is i would really say for you guys like grounding is 
<laughs> so, so important. The more grounded you get in your body, the more comfortable you get in your body, and the more grounded you get with, with Gaia, you know, traveling all the way down to the center of the earth and connecting with Gaia, um, exploring the libraries of light deep within the earth and connecting with inner earth civilizations, um, all those things so, <laughs> so important for you. Those are just, just the act of getting grounded, such as just doing a grounded grounding meditation or standing with your feet on the grass or standing with your feet in the ocean. Those are spiritual experiences for you and they help you with your spiritual purpose. You're very, very connected with Gaia. I imagine you guys having past lives, um, many in Atlantis, maybe as like crystal healers, um, as you know, in Atlantis, they had, I don't know what to call them. There were like energetic scientists, you know, D different, um, types of intellectual types, but were intellect and spirituality where like, intellectual pursuits and spiritual pursuits were all blended together. And you had spiritual technology, energetic technology, you know, where there wasn't this divide between spirituality and intellectualism in Atlantis that was really melded together. And you guys were part of that. You guys were part of the people making progress in those kind of energetic technologies. And you guys have so many past life gifts and memories to connect to and to bring that to life, um, bring that to fruition in this life. It's, it's <laughs> you guys are just, you guys are really, really cool people. <laughs> and it is exciting to connect with your energy. I'm getting tingles all over the top of my head. And uh, your sacral center, six of wands. And the two of cups, I got to talk about these together. I think you guys can immediately see the similarities between these two cards. And it's this is a pretty common representation for the two of cups, you know, two beings offering the cup. They're getting connected here. They're connecting under this, uh, the pyramid, the sky pyramid. And it's actually the same person. It is a mirror version of herself offering the cup to herself. But the six of wands, always that card of victory and success. But here it is the same thing. It is a being who's been split in half and is looking apart. And we have the caduceus here, two serpents entwining each other. So this is so much energy of divine union. And I think for a lot of you, this is to do with your like external partner, you know, a twin flame or soulmate person coming through. It's, you know, definitely that. But with these cards and especially with this deck, this is you getting reunited with other parts of yourself. This is you having like soul braid experiences, you connecting with yourself from parallel timelines, um, meeting with yourself in your dreams, <laughs> um, getting completely enmeshed and embodying your higher self. This is because you came here with this massive mission and you can't do it all by your very own little human self. You need your higher self to come into your body and you, you will be come more of yourself so that you can undertake these projects that you have signed up for. And this is so, it's so cool to have these high, high caliber cards in your lower chakras, because that is where that's like the foundation of our power. Yes, we use our higher chakras to get connected, you know, to download uh, frequencies from the cosmos and, you know, to download light codes and everything. But our lower chakras, that's how we actually exist in our bodies. And that is like the bottom of the pyramid. That is the foundation of our energy while we're in our human bodies. They're so important. And so many people's lower chakras are just totally wrecked. Um, but you guys, I don't think you got like this just overnight. You, this has been a lifetime of healing and inner work and inner journeying. And these cards are coming up to be, <laughs> to tell you that it is all pay has, it has all been paying off, you know, your solar, uh, your sacral chakra, sorry, six of wands, that has something has been healed. You have reconnected with other aspects of yourself and you've also healed any kind of trauma you had concerning sexuality and romantic partnerships. And this can also just be partnerships with your parents or with power structures, with, you know, social structures, with, you know, stupid corporate structures or just if you had trauma with the government, anything like that. This, this card wouldn't have come up here if those 
issues for you hadn't already been resolved. So you have, you have resolved them. It's going to be the details of that is going to be different for everybody, obviously, but whatever your power control struggles have been about, they have been sufficiently resolved. You have addressed them. So pat yourself on the back and two of cups in your solar plexus. This is any kind of like things that you used to see as personality defects or any massive self-confidence issues or self-doubt issues have also been resolved. You, you are literally giving yourself the cup. You're meeting with yourself. You have made peace with yourself and you're feeling comfortable in your body and you are feeling comfortable with who you are. You're feeling more like yourself than you ever have before. Beautiful, beautiful energies for your lower chakras. Yeah, especially... The, to have these two images of like self mirroring <laughs> it's like like you're looking in the mirror but realizing that the mirror isn't just a mirror it's actually a portal to another dimension and you have this chain you could like if you could imagine just kind of looking diagonally through space time and seeing the chain of all of your alternate selves going off in all directions of space time that's kind of how connected you guys are you are so connected <laughs> with yourself with all of yourselves um, all kind of hanging out together under the umbrella of your higher self energy. So cool. <laughs> and, uh, let's see. Your heart chakra. Nine of wands. Interesting. This person actually, they're meditating and they have their heart lit up. It is lighted up, but they are also, look, they, they are activating their transpersonal chakras, the soul star chakra, and then the two above that. And if you can actually see, there's this sphere of light above their head and then the sphere of light below their head. It is, I've never noticed that. Well, I mean, I've noticed it about this card before, but I never realized how significant it was. It's like you're getting closer to your higher self. You guys are getting really close to just completely merging and becoming your higher self. That's how evolved you guys are. That is how you have been doing so much work for so long. You're about to completely enmesh and entangle with your higher self. Like there will be no more separation. You won't even think of your higher self as, you know, higher self. It's just self. You're all, you're just your whole self. It's just the whole self. That's, that's the journey you guys are on to become your whole self. Um, but with this, for your very immediate moment that you're in, this, this now moment, there is a certain amount of tension in your heart, in your heart chakra, because the nine of wands, I mean, this is, this is a beautiful depiction of it. It's very meditative. It is very transcendent, but there is an element of exhaustion always with the nine of wands. It's why is this person sitting here meditating and just focusing on, you know, making bubbles of light around themselves is because they're fucking tired. <laughs> they are so tired. Um, like the battle has been long. I think you guys have been incarnating on earth for so long and you you have always been incarnating with a spiritual purpose with a, like a leadership function you guys have been priests and priestesses and shamans and medicine women and <laughs> all of those archetypes that you can think of that kind of fall under that uh spiritual servant category that's the kind of archetypes you that that is your archetype that is your your meta archetype and you have been living out those lives and i kind of feel like you guys when you were born in this life you're like oh not this again like i'm so tired i'm so done so right now your your heart needs to something needs to be transmuted maybe this frame of mind needs to be shifted i think you're a little bit traumatized by how long the journey has been and a little bit like you need a glass of cold water, a breath of fresh air and a good long nap. <laughs> you need a minute to recharge and then come back at your whole project here, reinvigorated and refreshed. It's a little bit like you're burnt out, almost like you're having like caregiver burn burnout. You know, when you hear like healthcare workers talk about health healthcare worker burnout, it's like they can't even feel any empathy for their patients anymore because they're so burnt out and the, you know a lot of the people who become healthcare workers have the most empathy and the most compassion but they can get so burnt out that they literally can't even care at all 
and it's just because of everything that they've been through it's been so exhausting i think you guys are like that so this is i think the the a pivotal moment for you a kind of linchpin moment you probably need gonna need to take a break you know whatever that means for you if that's taking a whole year off if that's just taking a weekend off, if that's going on vacation, if that's just having a hot bath, whatever taking some time off, taking a break means for you, you need to do whatever you need to do to recharge. And it, for you guys, it might not even be recharging. It might be like discharging, you know? Um, like I'm, I'm a huge, huge, huge introvert. And I know when other, other introverts talk about how they need time alone to recharge, and I used to use that expression myself, like, oh, I, I need to get away from everybody. I need to go be myself so I can recharge. And then I realized that that wasn't exactly it. I mean, I do feel drained from being from social interaction, but it's it's not like people suck the energy out of me. I feel like their energy gets stuck to me. Like if I'm at a party and I'm having fun and everything's great, enough by the time the the night is over, I feel like I'm carrying everybody's energy like little black blobs all stuck to me stuck to me stuck to me and like I'm trying to walk with the weight of everybody else's problems with all of their emotions and feeling and th and thoughts and anxieties just all of it everybody's energy just totally stuck to me and I need to go have a shower I need to go walk my dog I need to spend like a day in bed just to let all those all that gunk all that ener energetic like sludge that everybody spewed onto me I need to get it off of me <laughs> I think you guys might also be like that where you need time to like get everybody's energy off of you <laughs> and I think once you do that and you you can tune back into your you know how you really are how you were before you hit this stage of burnout then you can come back at your mission um completely reinvigorated like coming at it with a blank slate you want to reach that tabula rasa state the blank slate so feel free absolutely to reinvent your life however you need to however you want to don't feel trapped or stuck by how you've been doing things and even if you already have like a successful business or successful career or an established life in some place you, you guys can toss it all away and rebuild somewhere else uh, that's like you guys can do whatever you want <laughs> you have all the power all the potential to do whatever you want so just you know don't let your past hold you back don't feel bogged down by what you have been doing you can completely reinvent it and that that's fantastic you have all the support all the foundation all the power all the resilience all the um capability to do it all and what's next your throat page of wands actually i was really guided right now to check the little blurb in the book about this particular card and i would like to read it to you because i had actually never read this description of this card in this book <laughs> from this deck and uh, i think it's really relevant it actually kind of goes along with what i was just saying so i'm just going to read this part just this little bit here the page of wands casts a ritual beneath an ancient archway into another world here she transmutes her energy into this newfound space unaware of what lies beyond its misty veil she knows that she is capable of anything she sets her mind to and doesn't stop to rest or question her direction fueled by excitement she crosses the threshold yeah this is the kind of energy you guys are naturally tuned into i think this is your natural state and you need that that break i was just talking about in order to tune back into this because you guys have so much I almost feel like you have an internal combustion engine inside of you and that it is really like your throat is really motorized for most people their like typical motor center tends to be their sacral center um for you guys it's it's like it's your throat center <laughs> your and that that is like that's that's a good i see that as a good thing that's evolved that is leveled up that is amped up and it's a higher octave and it's it's, it's instead of um radiating all of your energy from your sacral center um which is you know very earthy and very human and all of that you're radiating it out from just like the level of your consciousness from from your higher chakras from your upper chakras and it is just 
that is how you can carry out this project that you're on, this mission that you're on, and that is how you can carry it out. But it's really just really kind of cool that it's a page, this page energy, because it is, even though I just feel like you guys are so advanced and evolved, but you have still this child, like childlike a uh, sense of wonder and glee and love and freedom and you guys need to feel free and the freer you feel the more effectively you can like conduct your rituals or do your energy work or do the healing you do for others or just whatever it is you're here to do because the details um you know different for everybody obviously but you're all part of this like the spiritual healer service person, energy worker, light worker archetype. <laughs> and you can do that all when you're more tuned into this fiery, childlike throat chakra energy. But I, it's going to be hard for you to be operating at, from that space when your heart is feeling so exhausted. So And your third eye is the Ten of Pentacles. <laughs> and look at this Ten of Pentacles, guys. It is Stonehenge. It is Stonehenge in your third eye. And I mean, come on, you got <laughs> the tower in your crown chakra. And look at this tower. Just bolts of lightning coming in. And not to mention that judgment card. The These these high frequency cards blowing my mind. Um, so together, these two cards in your kind of, you know, your psychic interface chakras, your third eye and your crown, you guys are uh, d channeling and downloading so much energy. And this energy it has the, the capacity to completely transform your life tower moment in your crown chakra that could be you know astrally traveling the entire cosmos that can be um a soul braid with your higher self completely like i said earlier becoming your higher self being becoming your whole self not even anymore thinking of it as your higher self just thinking of yourself as your whole self trans like transcending dimensions being able to to travel dimensions being able to travel straight back to source being just being able to read the Akashic records like reading the newspaper, being, you know, wh whatever your particular skill set is in terms of just energy work or mysticism and all that, just lightning shocks coming down from the cosmos. You guys have so much communication coming through and the Ten of Pentacles just with that Stonehenge in your third eye. Um, again, I'm just so drawn to how how much support you guys have because you know of course you can't do your mission alone and you're not you guys have a massive amount of support and you know saying something like that might seem weird because of course every single being on the planet whether they're um you know a powerful light worker or an ant they all have support interdimensional support right er, er, we are all supported no one is ever 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 doing it alone however you guys have extra <laughs> you guys have extra support just because of the connections you've had, because your old souls and because of the connections that you've made over so many lifetimes and yeah there <laughs> you and because you have evolved yourselves and expanded your consciousness you were tuned in to so many so many so much what am i trying to say you guys can channel so much energy that enables you to literally receive more support because you're so open to it and because you can handle the energy that is coming in. And that Stonehenge thing, I just feel like you guys are all going to have at some point in your life a moment where you are either stuck in a location or you are brought to a location that is incredibly activating for you, like a sacred, a sacred place. Um, I'm so reminded of when the universe basically <laughs> guided me to Mount Halasan in on Jeju Island in South Korea. And I was literally hiking up this volcano, um, which has all kinds of, you know, so, uh, spiritual significance in, you know, Korean mythology. And I was on that mountain 
when Super Typhoon Chaba in 2016 hit. <laughs> and let me tell you that that mountain was so, the energy on that mountain was insane. And then to be on it when the, when the typhoon, the hurricane came by was insane. And none of this was planned. It was all just random accident. And that's the kind of stuff that could be happening to you guys. You know, it could be, you can think back in hindsight to places you went when you were a kid or weird places you've ended up. Or if you feel strongly, strongly pulled to go somewhere, I'm getting getting shivers <laughs> confirmation on that there will be places you will go in this lifetime and you don't need to push it or rush it this will all just happen like you can't mess this up it will be if you're sitting there going oh you know I've always wanted to go to um to Indonesia I gotta go there now well I mean if if you know be careful in discerning when you need to do that if like of course you want to go there now who do, who wouldn't want to who wouldn't love to go to Indonesia right now right but when it is truly time it will unfold really effortless, effortlessly for you so you don't feel like you need to force it ahead of time um discern between impatience of wanting to go there now and between really really feeling a true actual like guidance to go there right now you know and I, I, you guys, I trust that you guys can sort that out and you know the difference because you guys are these evolved spiritual beings. But yeah, the message with this is that you're going to be going to places where you will receive incredible activations and you will also be doing energy work like grid working in those locations as well. You'll be receiving codes and you'll be planting codes down into the um, Akashic Records, the living libraries of light in the earth. That's one of the things you came here to do is to download these upgrades and these codes from the universe, from source, process them through your human vessel, through this human vessel that is a manifestation of, a, of your light body. Our human body is just one more layer of our various levels of light bodies. Downloading the codes, processing them in your light body that is the human body, and then grounding it into the earth, and then sending the energy back up. You guys are also just here learning about earth and sending the information about your experience back up to higher dimensional beings because they are not in human bodies you are and you can teach them about what it means to be a human you can teach them about your human experience and you are teaching the whole universe about what needs to be done right here right now and you're doing it <laughs> you, you guys are you're calling the shots um on some levels so <laughs> I think, I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. This was really cool, very exciting. I'm very happy to connect with you guys and just thank you for existing and doing your work. I hope to see you guys again later. Bye. Hey, deck number three, welcome to your reading. You guys are the Naked Heart Tarot. I'm doing these readings like they are private readings. So I'm going to shuffle and deal on the camera. And uh, if you guys ever do feel called to get a private reading with me, you can check my um, Etsy shop. It's in the description box down below. Okay, I'm going to pull them all and then before I talk about them. So your root chakra. Ooh, high priestess. Sacral chakra, nine of wands. Solar plexus. Knight of Swords. Heart Chakra, Ten of Pentacles. Throat, Nine of Pentacles. <laughs> Third eye, seven of swords, and your crown, 
the Naked Heart. I thought this card was going to come up. This is the namesake of the deck. Okay. Mm. Bottom of your deck is the tower. <laughs> so welcome to your tower moment, guys. Uh, I bet some of you already know what this is about. Something has just recently happened to you that rocked your socks off. <laughs> um, we'll just let the tower chill over here. How about that? Okay. I'm really have been staring for a few minutes at this high priestess card this high priestess as you're representing your root chakra you guys are really tuned into divine feminine energy and have a very important connection with mother earth with gaia you guys have definitely had past lives as witches or priestesses i can kind of see somebody uh sitting like kneeling in the soil like kneeling on the earth and sinking their hands deep into the soil i don't know if you guys are if any of you are into gardening if you really like plant people <laughs> um but i just feel like nature and connecting with like fe feminine archetypes feminine mystical magical archetypes and so so connected with the earth and with trees and with the moon yeah, um obviously with this moon goddess symbol up here and this is represented by an owl so much wisdom coming coming from the earth i just feel like traditional like traditional feminine wisdom I don't know, I would not be surprised at all to find out that some of you guys, or most of you, can't come from, like, long lines of, like, like a priestess lineage or um, many, many witches in your ancestry. Um, past lives as witches, definitely, definitely. But I, I feel like even more than past lives, this is a, something to do with like your mother and your grandmother and your great, great, great your great grandmother going back literally from the, your, the physical body you're in now back through your female line that there is something, maybe even, maybe you don't know about it. Maybe it's hidden. There's something special and significant and mysterious and magical and mystical about the women, the fe the female line in your family. Um, of course, this bleeds into your sacral chakra, which is the nine of wands, the sacral chakra being your, your feminine center. Nine of wands, feeling persecuted, feeling exhausted, feeling defeated, feeling embattled. The, <laughs> I, I, guys, I, like, do you guys have ancestors who were like Salem witches? <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of thing and it doesn't have to be you you don't have to have witches who were burnt at the stake or salem witches you know for example i know i had a past life where i was a witch and i was caught by the church and i was like tortured and beaten to death i wasn't burnt at the stake and i wasn't caught by the inquisition inquisition because this was actually before the inquisition really started i was kind of um caught by the church before it was cool <laughs> i was like one of the first waves when this was just getting started so you know i'm using these examples of you know salem witch and burnt at the stake but it doesn't have to be that specific but it's, it's that kind of vibe right that kind of thing it, it doesn't have to be european culture either obviously <laughs> um that's just what i'm most familiar with it can be whatever the the kind of female witchcraft practitioner medicine woman or a female shaman type of archetype is um, in any part of the world, it, it's that type of, uh, type of energy. And, but I, I think for a lot of you, this, this would be either, uh, like a European thing, um, you know, paganism or Native American, or as we say in Canada, First Nations, um, roots, either in your past lives or in your ancestry. And I think you have a little bit of ancestral karma going on here because I feel like there's such a strong link between you and your mother's line your mother and your grandmother and your great-grandmother back back and back all like mother to daughter that there's some kind of ancestral karma playing out and I think you guys have actually incarnated here or you know incarnated in this line of women in order to clear out 
um, balance that karma. And I know what that's like. The same, the same thing applies to me. Um, you know, a whole mess of baggage in my family from mother to daughter has gone on. And I, um, I came into this lineage, like part of, you know, when we incarnate, I think we go through like an agreement process, like, okay, this line of people is going to let you incarnate in their, in their family. And, you know, well, what are you going to bring to the table? They're, they're giving you the opportunity to exist and to have this opportunity to exist at this point in time and in this body and in this family and in this place. And what are you going to bring? Well, you're going to do an energetic service for them. You're going to help them clear out this mess. <laughs> you're going to help them clear out parasitic attachments. You're going to help them balance out things like poverty mentality or, you know, not being able to break out of cycles of poverty, not being able to break out of cycles of slavery. You came in to break out this ancestral issue, whatever it is, it has been passed down from mother to daughter for a long time. And <laughs> you guys are actually bringing in quite a lot of masculine energy in order to do this because you, you need that. There's this strong, 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 strong feminine connection and foundation, but it's also been like damaged at some point. So that's why your solar plexus here is the movement of swords. This is the knight of swords. Depicted here as a panther, you know, wielding a sword. <laughs> I think in order for you guys to clear this out, you were literally born like with this, this sword so that you can cut these cords. You know, you can do the cord cutting. You can, you have the sharpness of mind. You have the ruthlessness. It could even be you know, ruthless like a panther. It's you guys are not afraid. You guys do not back down from a fight. You guys are not afraid to stand up for yourself. You guys are so quick to defend the people close to you, like your friends and your family, like you're like a, really a warrior spirit. And I think that has, it's very interesting to see how that is like kind of bringing, coming into correct and balance out whatever kind of went wrong <laughs> with this feminine lineage. And I think for you guys, a lot of this, may, maybe when I was saying, uh, talking about like poverty consciousness or being, not being able to break out of, you know, possibly thousands of years of poverty or thousands of years of slavery, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> you you guys are, I think, have come, come actually come here to come into quite a bit of abundance and money. You literally have the Ten of Pentacles in your heart chakra and the Nine of Pentacles in your throat chakra. <laughs> so, I mean, that isn't only about money and abundance, but you don't get those two cards side by side without there being... A certain amount of money coming in, right? I mean, it. and if you guys aren't feeling financial prosperity right now, this is part of your life journey because it is literally how your energy centers are vibrating. If your heart chakra is vibrating um, with the energy of the 10 of pentacles, that is like, you're gonna at some point in life finally sync up with the abundance that you already have. It's just, you have it in the future. <laughs> you know, your, your future has already happened life is all happening at once. You're just having the experience of going through it. So all the money you come into later in life, it's already yours. It's your, it's yours. You energetically own it. It is part of the life that already exists for you. You just need to get your node of consciousness. You just need to travel to that point where you now get to see it. So your heart chakra is resonating with abundance. And again, this is also earth energy. I was talking about how you are so, so connected with the earth, like really like sinking your your fingers down into the earth. This pentacles, 10 of pentacles for the heart and nine of pentacles for your throat. That's so much earth energy. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you guys have lots of earth energy in your birth chart. So look at this elephant. Again, that is like d uh, divine feminine wisdom. That's how I think of elephants, you know, the matriarchal societies. <laughs> and we've got this funny flamingo. This is, I love that it's in this order, right? Because the 10 of pentacles in, is abundance that you share with your community. It is an outflowing abundance. You guys are probably um, quite giving of your money and your resources when you have them to spare. And, you know, and if you don't have that ability now, you're going to later in life, even if it takes all the way till you're retired, you guys, I think can fully expect to retire in health and happiness and abundance because you it's like you want to you want to have money not just for yourself you want to have money so you can share it with your community share it with your family you want it to flow outwards from you 
you you guys have the potential to be you know the head of the household to be the major breadwinner to be the kind of rock um if you guys are want to have a family like want to have a family life have your life constructed around your family so so much energy good for that but it could also be manifesting in terms of your business this could be family or business i think but because it is about being the centerpiece of this wellspring of abundance really cool <laughs> and the nine of pentacles for your throat I, I keep hearing the words unapologetic <laughs> i think you guys any money that you do come into you earned it you earned it, it i keep thinking of taurus energy actually if you guys have if you guys are taurines or have a lot of taurus in your birth charts it is it's that you guys know that you earned it it's that second house energy second house placements too on your birth chart look for that you guys earned it you know you deserve it and you're not afraid to be to feel luxurious and to feel um prosperous and you you want to <laughs> i feel like you guys might want you want to be seen you want to be seen like you would enjoy dressing up getting you know getting dressed up and going out and having a good time like a little bit of glamour i don't know if you, you guys like into like gatsby parties and stuff like that and i just keep thinking of also the scene in the titanic when uh she comes down the stairs in her dress you know that kind of thing <laughs> um feeling luxurious and this is all really good never let anybody let you make you feel um guilty about that or or and i don't think you guys would but maybe sometimes people try to make you feel like you shouldn't want luxury or that you shouldn't want abundance because maybe your ancestors have this baggage with money and they think that money is evil or money is bad and but that has actually just kept them down that has kept them poor and that has kept the money in the hands of the people who are controlling them and enslaving them you are here to reclaim that into like the be a circuit of abundance i know that sounds weird but i, I remember hearing about this um woman who's here with a very specific spiritual mission she basically meditates all day and she's just doing very specific types of meditation too, like doing energy work, just sitting in her adobe hut. And she feels like her literal body is a circuit of abundance. And when she inserts her body into the flow of energy on the planet, that she's like amplifying abundance and bringing more abundance in for the entire collective. You, you guys remind me of that, um, you know when you make money and bring in abundance it is literally holding frequencies of abundance for everybody else so go and be as rich as you guys can because you will literally be helping me get more money if you guys get more money because as you build your abundance that is holding frequency of abundance for me so thank you for that i feel like you guys are really hard working and not afraid to if, if you guys aren't already in business for yourself you guys would be i think very successful business owners <laughs> so let's see third eye so this is basically the main negative energy i mean we had the nine of swords i mean the nine of wands over here but the seven of swords um this is a block to your third eye and that's okay most of, i mean all of the time actually if we have a block in our chakras it's because we've put it there We've put it there <laughs> um, at, at, on some level, our consciousness put this block in. So there's something stopping you from unlocking your psychic perception. Essentially, if you guys have been wanting to become more psychic or if you have been wanting to communicate with your guides or just to explore your spirituality more or what all of that, um, and you're feeling like you just can't make any progress, it's something needs to come out <laughs> of your third eye. I, and that actually might be connected to this tower moment things because if you're watching this things have already started to shift for you things are already starting to change and because we have all of this earth energy people who have a lot of earth energy i know i'm one of them can have a really hard time like massively hard time opening up to believing in things that we can't see okay earth energy likes real likes things that you can see and touch and we go yeah this table is real because i can see it and i can touch it and i can hear it and i can feel it and it's real um but with too 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 much too much earth energy we can really just go well i can't i can't see it therefore it doesn't exist like i want proof i want i want to like see an alien before i believe in aliens that kind of thing <laughs> right like never wanting you know i'm not going to believe in the app in any kind of afterlife because i can't, there's no proof right this this is the kind of thing so 
if 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 you guys feel like you're like that um i mean that's absolutely fine you don't need to change <laughs> there's there's no reason why you need to believe in life after death there's no reason that you should believe in anything beyond what you can perceive that's that's fine there's there's <laughs> that's it if that's if that's your reality then that's your reality and there's no reason to change um the only reason to change is if you if you want to <laughs> if you want to open up to just exploring and you don't have to you don't have to go okay like i woke up today and now i'm totally new age and i believe everything i read on the internet and everything is just all crazy and i'm down the rabbit holes into all of it you don't need to go down any rabbit hole you can just open up to new weird random things new experiences just trying to go okay maybe this maybe that i'm going to do an experiment on this i'm going to do an experiment into that what if this is real what if that is real just getting just getting curious and getting exploratory you don't need to believe anything without proof that's fine but just getting getting comfortable with the idea of opening your third eye just as an experiment just as something to explore just as something new to do that would be my i guess that that's how i did it essentially that is how i started moving away from being limited by all of my earth energy and you know you only need to do any of this you only need to unblock your third eye if you feel limited by the physical existence if you're starting to feel limited by where you're at if you want to feel more unlimited just explore opening your third eye that's it <laughs> And I think that is, that's what's happening for you guys right now because of the tower moment. The tower moment is coming through to help you unblock your third eye and to open it up and to get it rehabilitated. It's like in the matrix, um, when Neo opens his eyes, I can't remember how the scene exactly goes, <laughs> but is, is, doesn't he say like, why do my eyes hurt? And Morpheus is all, uh, you've never used them before, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> so a tower moment is coming through to help you open your third eye and Bam, crown chakra, the naked heart. No matter how skeptical you guys might be now or however skeptical you were in the past, you're about to take the red pill. <laughs> I mean, you already have because you're watching this video, but sometimes it takes our conscious mind a little bit to catch up. <laughs> so as your third eye slowly opens um and as this information starts to filter down through your crown chakra and into your psychic perception it takes a while but this is the naked heart this is the penultimate card of this deck it is after the world card this is starting to understand that the whole cosmos the whole omniverse all shares one cosmic heart everything is connected all is one your your that, that is the frequency that your crown chakra is, is attuning to just like red pilled to the extreme and i don't mean that in any kind of political sense i don't even really mean that in the sense of the matrix it is just you know that's the easiest metaphor i have of <laughs> with your crown chakra being vibrating at this level you're going to be experiencing a whole new sense of how consciousness exists <laughs> like spiritual awakening yeah mystical experiences yeah opening your third eye yeah tower moment hell yeah like <laughs> i i don't know i don't know how else to put it i would say at this point in your journey guys expect the unexpected and expect the unexpected to be very unexpected and if you made a list of things that you think are least likely to be real they're probably real like it, it, you're you're going to be finding out that those things that you thought were impossible are actually real that it's that level of like mind blown you guys are going to be having your mind blown and it's it's funny because this is part of the journey you built for yourself. You came, you came into this life going, okay, we're going to, we're going to start our lives being very, um, kind of working on, working within limitations. You know, the first part of your life has been limited. You designed it that way. You designed, you wanted to explore limitations and you were working on kind of clearing out this ancestral karma. And then at this point in your life, this tower moment comes in, you start unlocking your third eye and just, 
red pilled on a cosmic level. <laughs> Your consciousness is expanding way out to back to where it has always always been but you've been cut off from it so whatever has been blocking your crown chakra in the past that block has already been dissolved and it's just filtering down into your third eye right now so i don't know guys just get ready to be mind blown whatever you're sitting there thinking right now going that's bullshit that's bullshit that's bullshit it's probably not you're gonna be finding out soon that everything is real <laughs> so i think that's what i'm seeing for you guys uh I'm excited for you. Your journey is going to be crazy and exciting and just really fucking awesome. So thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hello, deck number five, Mystic Mondays Tarot. You guys actually have a general theme of a fresh start or a new start or maybe put it more precisely it's starting something over again something that you've been that you've done before but in a new way after after a break and after getting getting a chance to reinvent it or at least reinvent your approach um i say that just because that's typically the general theme of this deck and i <laughs> filmed the first three decks their readings a couple of days ago and um a whole bunch of you know Life got in the way, and here I am doing your reading a couple of days later. Got different color nail polish. <laughs> so, I don't know how you're seeing that play out, but that is the general energetic background to your reading. So, okay, your root chakra <laughs> the fool <laughs> uh exactly that exactly what i just said would be fool energy starting fresh starting brand new starting all over again on your hero's journey <laughs> that is really clear cleared out energy um i have been seeing a really significant theme for a lot of people in the last few weeks of root chakra healing and clearing and th this applies to you even if you're watching this many years after i've filmed this video you're tuning into this little pocket of energy of having hit the reset button on your root chakra and that is going to be able to give you a newfound sense of freedom, security, safety, and abundance in your physical vessel. The The issue that we a lot of us have been clearing out of our root chakra is when your root chakra is not functioning properly, uh, it's lack mentality, it's scarcity mentality, it's not feeling safe, like physically feeling unsafe, feeling insecure on all kinds of levels, anything to do with not feeling good about your body, not feeling good about your security, um, and all of that causing a ton of anxiety <laughs> that is that's what we have been cleared out and you have done that so <laughs> so perfect couldn't have picked a more perfect card for that four of swords queen of pentacles i don't like it when two cards jump out um if those are relevant for you they will come back up or a very similar card will come back up okay see your solar plex or your sacral chakra sacral sacral center king of swords i'm gonna pull the rest of the cards before i talk about them that uh the fool in your root chakra was just very synchronous solar plexus knight of cups your heart four of pentacles okay that's one we just saw. Throat. Four of Swords. Third Eye. Eight of Pentacles. And your Crown. King of Pentacles. 
Okay, basically, to just skip ahead a little bit, the clearing and healing you have so very recently done on your root chakra, that has kind of leveled up into your heart chakra, and your heart will be the next center that I would recommend working on. It's kind of the higher octave of the problems you just solved, um, but instead of them being issues of physical security or body pr problems or if if you used to feel an incredible lack of grounding like no connection to your body no connection to the earth those issues you've you've resolved those now but now you have kind of a similar set of issues a similar theme taking place in your heart chakra and you're going to have a lot easier time clearing out this blockage in your heart now that you've cleared it out of your your first layer, so to speak. It's going to be easier now. You had to clear out these survival level issues so that now you can work on your like love level issues or empath level issues. You're going to be opening yourself up to a lot more, a lot, a lot much more greater flow of love. That is your <laughs> your next project, I guess, in terms of your personal development. Because the Four of Pentacles is, you know, it's not that bad of a card. Okay, I am so sorry about the camera jumping around like that. I know that is kind of nauseating to watch. I'm having some minor technical difficulties, but I think I'm back on track, so... Pressing forward, I was talking about the Four of Pentacles in your throat, or I mean in your heart, sorry. The Four of Pentacles is not that bad of an energy, but it can definitely be stagnant. It can definitely be stingy. To have this in your heart, uh, first of all, there's not much of a flow happening in your heart. You're, you're trying to protect your heart. You've built up a wall around it, and that is preventing you from sending love. It's preventing you from receiving love. It is, it's like there's a there's a plug, there's a clog, literally a clog in your heart center, which is unpleasant, but it, you know, don't beat yourself up about it because we install these kind of blocks in our heart to protect ourselves. So, you know, you've been hurt in the past, including your past in this life and your past and all of your previous lives, and you have built up this uh, shell around your heart, but I think it's actually more like you've plugged it up is, is what I'm seeing. Not so much a shell, but just clogged it right up so that you could feel numb. If you can't feel anything, then that's better than feeling pain, right? <laughs> At least, you know, that's how we can, most of us can feel a lot of the time. So, but now that you do not have these, uh, like, security issues, these physical, like, you no longer are feeling as threatened in your body, you're having a fresh start with your root that is going to enable you to clear out this block to your heart because, well, now you're, you don't have to live in fear. You don't have to be living in so much of a struggle. You're not living in the fight or flight thing. Your root center is clear. You now have a much more healthy relationship with your body and with the earth. You know, it's not like it's perfect. Of course, there's going to be further clearings and healings you can do in your root chakra. But definitely for now, you've done a great job. You've come a long way. Um, it's a whole, it's a whole new start, just like I had figured <laughs> before I, uh, even drew your cards. So the thing with this heart block is when we start to dissolve these blocks in our heart, it can be painful. You know, you could find yourself crying. Um, you can find yourself going through a certain amount of heartbreak. It's because you're going to be opening yourself up to, um, new frequencies, new levels of emotion, new levels of feeling, new levels of love and pain that you haven't felt in a very long time. So that can be, you know, uncomfortable. So just take it easy and be easy with yourself as you work through this, because it's going to be like the the flood, the floodgates are going to be opening as soon as this, this plug comes out of your heart. And it's, it's actually really cool just looking, um, I know I skipped over your sacral center and your solar plexus, uh, which I'm going to go back to now, but it's like this energy that is this fresh start energy, this new pristine clear energy coming up out of your root is flowing upwards through your sacral center, through your solar plexus and into your heart. So it's like 
you've been working from the bottom up and that is the perfect way to work on your chakras to start with your root and go up 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 you know so yeah like i often you know work on one and then skip around just kind of depending on what's going on but it can be really useful just to start at the bottom and go up because that energy spirals up um from the earth up through our our energy bodies and you know your sacral center is a king of swords which is good and bad. <laughs> I mean, we, we don't need to be really judging this as good or bad, but there's pros and cons to your sacral center op like operating with this frequency. The good thing is that this is a feeling really confident, like, because your sacral center is a good motor center and it is where we can source a lot of our confidence. And the King of Swords is absolutely confident, but this can be a little bit cold uh, and a little bit logical and rational and it's a very masculine energy in your sacral center to which is naturally a feminine center which is naturally uh you know ideally we would want it to be passionate and free-flowing so honestly <laughs> this makes me think that it, it's something going on in your like romantic life or your sex life this is feeling if you ever feel like you can't enjoy sex, even with your partner or with somebody you just really want to get with, if you feel like you can't relax, you can't enjoy yourself because you can't relax and you're just kind of like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I relax and enjoy this? I, I want this. I want to do this. This could be good. But I just, you know, if you're, <laughs> if you've ever been it, like trying to get yourself in the mood, but you just keep thinking about the bills or, you know, your job tomorrow, stuff like that, this, so, even though this is a good energy for your confidence and your ability to get stuff done, in, in a lot of ways, it's a good energy for your sacral center. But in terms of romance and sex, it is not that great. So, <laughs> but I don't, I don't think you really, I mean, you can do whatever you want, obviously, but I don't think you need to worry about that too much because this is, honestly, it's connected up with your, with your heart. Once you, start to pull this block out of your heart that is going to also just free up the general flow of good vibing feelings the flow of love in your whole system and then i think that's going to really take the edge off this swords energy this really mental masculine energy out of your sacral center so i would focus more on your heart and i think that will have an ancillary ancillary <laughs> uh, healing effect on your sacral center and um Interestingly, your solar plexus is the Knight of Cups. The very first thing I thought of when I just picked this card up is that you're more comfortable sharing your love in a more intellectual way, <laughs> if that's the word. It's this makes me think of, you know, love languages. I don't really get the sense that you guys uh, are really into, like, gift giving and, you know, romant like ro writing romantic poetry for your loved one. It doesn't, doesn't really seem like that. I think you guys would tend to more express your love by acts of service, you know, really going out of your way uh, to, do, to do something. Um, probably really practical for somebody that you care about. And that, and that is how you show them that you, <laughs> that you care about them. And the, tr the, tr I mean, that, that's great. And I'm actually like that myself. The trouble is, I think you guys might end up feeling that nobody appreciates what you're doing for them. And they might think, oh, this, you know, you don't care about me at all because you don't tell me <laughs> or you don't, you know, do those really romantic things and you're sitting there going, Hey, but you know, I, I cooked you dinner and I made you a sandwich and I canceled that my plans for you. And I freed up all this time for you. And look, I helped you move and I helped you do all these things. And I've helped you organize your bank balance and <laughs> doing all these things. And you, you're feeling, I think a little bit misunderstood because you feel like you're really demonstrating your love to people, but they're not getting it because they have a different love language. So, you know, thinking about different love languages, uh, might be helpful for you, if, especially, you know, if you are in a relationship, in a romantic re relationship or trying to get in a romantic relationship. It's good if both people are aware of their love languages. 
aware of the other person's love language. And then you can kind of start to, you know, not exactly change for the other person because that's not what you want to do. But you can start to understand how each person is expressing themselves differently. And then you can both understand each other better and it will be uh, more satisfying for everybody involved. So it's it's like this. That's that's where your love is flowing. Your love is flowing out of your masculine solar plexus, which is interesting. It's not I don't. It's kind of unusual. I think you, you guys are rather <laughs> unusual people. Um, I mean, I, according to the YouTube analytics, 93% of my viewers are female. But this spread, I get a vibe. If there are any men watching this, maybe you guys picked this pile. And But for all the women watching this, you are, I think, the kind of girls who actually have a lot of masculine energy. And not that that means anything to do with how you look or how you act or anything it is just literally your on, on a very energetic level i just want to make it very clear i'm only talking about your energetic level and how you express that energy is entirely up to you and can be whatever but it's just so interesting to see this very strong masculine rational mental swords air energy, air energy in your sacral center, and then seeing this kind of um, expressive emotional water energy in your masculine solar plexus center. It's it's the opposite that most people would be calibrated. It's like you guys are uh, a little bit, yeah, you're, you're going against the grain. The way you are calibrated is against the grain, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it is useful, I think, to be aware of that because then you will be able to realize why other people tend to misunderstand you it's because they're not used to people like you you're very different they don't they've never met anybody like you in fact people just getting in romantic relationships with you i think would be very surprised they'd be like wow this person is so unique this person is so different look at how um unusual unusual they are and this can be those are all really good things it's good to be unique and different and unusual but yeah, you know, you guys probably feel a little bit alienated and misunderstood because of that. And yeah, so that's all I think I have to say about those two interesting cards. The Four of Pentacles. Yeah, your heart center is the main thing for you to be working on. So keeping that in mind, let's take a look at your upper chakras. Okay, so your throat is this Four of Swords. Two main things going on with this. First of all, your throat is currently undergoing healing. You know, so we talked about how you have already healed your root. You will be healing your heart. And right now, like the day you're watching this video and, uh, you know, the preceding days and the coming days after this, your throat is right now going through a healing and you know i don't know about you guys but for me when my throat is being activated and healed i tend to feel like i have a sore throat i feel a little bit stuffy you know kind of feel like i'm getting a cold my ears can be pluggy all of that kind of ear nose and throat stuff um if you're if you're having that and you've been trying to figure out like are you sick um anything like that um you know as long as it doesn't get too severe it's probably just your energy body trying to <laughs> sort itself out so currently healing your throat but also with the four of swords it's healing through taking a big time out big big time out so to get the four of swords in your throat if you've been having trouble speaking like literally maybe you're having some kind of a I just, I'm so reminded of when I had laryngitis I when I had my spiritual awakening I I felt so strongly like I just needed time where I didn't have to talk to anybody. But of course, I couldn't just check out. I had this whole life to deal with. Um, <laughs> and thankfully, I manifested laryngitis. And literally for a month, I lost my voice entirely. And it, normally, any other period of my life, I would have been very upset to get laryngitis and to lose my voice so, so totally for so long. But at that moment, it was perfect because it gave me the the perfect out. I didn't have to talk to anybody. I could just lie in bed and be sick. And <laughs> and uh, even when I was better and up on my feet, I still couldn't talk because I literally had lost my voice. It was amazing. So 
you could have something physical like that where you literally can't talk or maybe you're just starting to trip all over your words or do you ever feel like silence is consuming your soul like in, in a good way like you're just wrapped in silence and you just want to be silent for a period of time just deeply going within that's all part of this and as much as you can there is a big invitation here to really allow yourself that time out whatever you can do to give yourself space alone time quiet time time where you don't need to express yourself so much because your throat your voice your expression needs to take a time out so that it can heal Okay, moving on up to your third eye, Eight of Pentacles. Here depicted as an artist happily painting. I don't know if you, some of you must be artists, any type of artist, it doesn't have to be visual art. But I think whatever project you're working on, whatever kind of creative expression you guys do, whatever kind of art you do, or if it's a business, it is really cosmically inspired. You guys are receiving information through your crown chakra like ideas dreams you guys are channeling the muse and your work you're learning this you're an apprentice but you've gained a certain level of mastery just not total mastery this is your third eye is open and it is opening wider it is getting more attuned to higher frequencies but i feel like that this is really applied like i just keep thinking about somebody imagining another world or dreaming of another world and then literally painting a picture of it it's that kind of frequency you guys are tuning into the muse and you are able to channel that and then write a book about it or paint a painting about it make a game about it blog about it you, you are really applying your psychic perception and if you haven't started doing that yet i think you guys have been feeling that nagging feeling and this is the reminder here is that how can you apply what you are perceiving? You, you guys are all tuning into some kind of energy, to some kind of information, to some kind of frequencies. And the universe is kind of like, okay, we gave you this pack of, package of energy. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to make with it? What are you going to create with it? Big invitation here to be creating whatever you are perceiving, whatever you are thinking, whatever you are imagining, whatever you are feeling. Go out and apply it. Create something with it. And this crown chakra card is very interesting. King of Pentacles, which is kind of the opposite of a crown card because this is earth energy. But I was looking at this this dude. It, doesn't it look like he's coming out of a portal? I think that this is... Okay, for some of you, this is a passed on loved one. This is a passed on loved one, you know, letting you know that they are here. They are with you. They are sending you love and energy and guidance. Others of you, this is some other type of guide, what, whoever your guides are, um, or if you're tuning into, this could absolutely be archangels as well. You know, it's different for everybody, but this is a figure, masculine in energy, not necessarily male in gender, but masculine in energy. Somebody quite powerful, some being that is powerful and here is here to protect you. It can be earth spirits as well nature spirits the you know the possibilities of who this figure is are endless and will be different for every single person but the thing here is that this is just there is a being working very closely with you and they are sending you constantly energy down into your crown chakra and they are here to guide you and to remind you that you are not alone they have your back every every step of the way and I, I am so drawn to how they're coming through this portal. It's like they some some of these beings are from much higher dimensions, and they have qu quantumly tunneled down. You know, they are getting they're coming here through the veil to communicate with you and to help you to help you on this healing. They actually, since this is Earth energy, they have helped you a lot with your root issues, with your security issues, and they will be help, continuing to help you as you heal your heart so yeah i think 
the main, if you would like just one piece of advice, the main piece of advice from all of this is to just work on opening yourself up to more love. Work on pulling the block out of your heart. You know, the simple kind of just general ways you can start to do that is to work on um, practicing forgiveness. <laughs> you know, all of all of the really cheesy things, right? Um, practicing forgiveness, forgiving yourself as well as everybody else for um, practicing gratitude. Even if you don't have a lot to be thankful for, you do have something to be thankful for. <laughs> so working on that and practicing um, opening up to the idea of unconditional love. Of course, when you start this journey, you, you don't just automatically love everybody, <laughs> including all the horrible people, right? But you, you take your steps, you start um, finding more love for the things you can love, you know, like the trees or your dog, um, man, animals and plants, you know, you, you don't even need to worry about trying to feel unconditional love for humans because humans are the hard ones. Focus on plants and animals and disembodied spirits. You know, <laughs> there's so much that you can find that you can love unconditionally. Focus on that and then just be grateful for the love that you can experience. And of course, the more love you send out there, eventually it will start to be coming back at you. So I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, deck number five, welcome to your reading. This is the Thoth deck. And before I even pull your cards, I can tell you guys that you are a little different. <laughs> Every time I pick this deck for somebody, it turns out that yes, they, they are a little different because this deck itself is a little different. You guys have very unconventional beliefs, things that really fly against the face of conventionality, any conventions. You guys are unconventional to say the least. So I'm curious to see what this deck has to say about your chakra system. So your root, ooh, four of cups. Normally the four of cups is apathy basically or boredom. Here four of cups is luxury. I will pull them all and then I will talk about them one by one. Sacral center, nine of discs, gain, solar plexus, four of wands, completion, heart, Prince of Swords, Throat, <laughs> Lust, that would be the Strength card. Blah! Oh god, okay, let me uh... Try that again. <laughs> Third eye. Power. Four of discs. Crown. Prince of discs. I knew you guys were weird. <laughs> I mean that in the best way. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, are do you guys have a lot of Capricorn energy in your charts? Some of you must. Like, even if you're not Capricorn suns, Capricorn stelliums. I mean, a lot of people my age, there was a Capricorn stellium in the late 80s. Um, I have a Capricorn stellium. I have five planets in Capricorn, um, including my son at zero degrees Capricorn. I was born on the Capricorn solstice. And that's what I'm seeing here. I'm bringing that up because this is this is Capricorn energy. Um, so there's got to be a few of you who are <laughs> really resonating Capricorn and that with Saturn, that Saturnian energy, and those more like right out of antiquity, you know, uh, ancient Roman depictions of Saturn and. Bacchus, you know, the, and, um, who, who am I trying to think of? 
This is the problem when I'm channeling, doing these readings. I, I start to forget all of the things that I know. And then when I'm trying to recall from my memory <laughs> things about history, I, I, I can't think straight. Who is the, the Roman god of wine? Okay, yeah, it was the Roman god of wine was Bacchus, who I already mentioned, and I was trying to think of his other name, his Greek name, Dionysus. It's that kind of energy <laughs> that that you guys are tuning into, and like Luciferian energy, but in the not. I don't ever mean in a satanic way. I mean in the. I mean you got you got the card right here: lust, luxury, um, desire really wanting to experience the sensual side of life, really enjoying um, a good glass of wine, really enjoying a good party, really enjoying um, the right sexual partner, if you know what I mean. And I, I hope it's clear that I, I mean all of this in a really good way. This is, this is cool. This is, um, really rich and delicious energy about you guys. So your root is luxury. This is what you guys want. <laughs> this is how you want to feel. It's it's so funny because the four of cups in the traditional tarot is kind of a negative card. Here, um, it is luxury. You're, where other people might be bored, um, you're like, no, you know, I don't, I don't think you guys feel like you need to be busy. In fact, you probably really, really hate the rat race and you really, really hate the idea of having to work for a living and you want to just feel, you know, like an old Roman who was sitting there being fed grapes and drinking wine and just feasting. I don't know why I get such a, such a Roman, ancient Rome vibe off of you guys, which is interesting, interesting because I recently remembered um, one of my past lives in Rome about 2000 years ago. So maybe something like that is coming up for you guys, but, uh, yeah, I think your, your root chakra is in a really good place. That's a, that's a really interesting energy for it. You wanting to feel luxurious. The only problem is it might cause you a lot of pain and discomfort when you actually have to go to work, <laughs> right? So a certain amount of practicality might be needed in order to balance this out because if this energy goes entirely into hedonism, I'm so reminded of, did any of you guys like to watch Futurama back in the day? It's so funny that show's like 20 years old now. That freaks me out. That, wow. That makes me feel old. Oh my God. But do you guys know Hedonism Bot? In the show Futurama, there's a robot. His name is Hedonism Bot. And he just walks around and he looks like a, um, like a, like an old Roman. And he, he is built like the robot body is part bed. And he just trots around on four legs, feeding himself grapes. And what he always says is, I regret nothing. <laughs> like as long as he had, to, as long as he had a good time, he don't regret it. He just wants to party. He's like the party robot, hedonism bot. So I think all of this really luxurious and hedonistic energy, actually, um, as long as you're keeping it from ruining your life, then you're good, you know? I think that is the only word of caution here. Don't go off the deep end. At some point, we all have to draw the line in the sand of, you know, when has the bender gone on too long? <laughs> when have we really had too much to drink? When have we really um, been to one too many parties? When do we really need to just um, stop for, for a little bit? But I don't think, I don't think that is a huge issue. I think you guys are managing to walk the line <laughs> and uh, your solar plex or sorry, your sacral chakra, nine of discs. This again, this is luxurious energy. This is you wanting to feel like you have it all. This would be the nine of pentacles. And that is always a card of luxury. And here it is listed as gain. You guys are hoping to Do you guys like to gamble? <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of. I think you you choose to make your money in non-conventional ways. And I think you're also quite tuned into Venus. I've been thinking a lot about Venus lately because 
Well, oddly enough, she moved into Venus. I mean, she moved into Libra at the time today, the day I'm filming this. And I've been thinking a lot about how for a lot of people, Jupiter is their primary money planet. Um, you know, Ju Jupiter is a great money planet, but not for me. Um, maybe it's because Jupiter is retrograding my birth chart, but Jupiter doesn't really bring me very much abundance. Um, but Venus does. When Venus has certain transits for me, money just comes coming in. And I think you guys are also a little bit like that because Venus is very luxurious and likes the finer things and likes beauty and likes, um, you know, this lust energy. I think you guys are tuned into Venus at the level of your sacral chakra and that is bringing in uh, money in unconventional ways like maybe some of you are models or you get money by gambling um probably a lot of you do like gig work self-employment yeah i don't see you guys thriving in a corporate career at all i i think you guys hate absolutely hate to have bosses or to have a schedule or to being told what to do and your solar plexus four of wands completion <laughs> i don't think at this point in your journey you guys suffer from a lack of self-confidence maybe when you were younger because you guys are so unusual and you're a little bit different and you're into, I think, a little bit of the darker side of life, you probably had a lot of insecurities and self-doubt when you were younger. But now your, your solar plexus is literally, this is the card of completion of all the boxes being checked, of having come a full circle. So your solar plexus is absolutely resonating in a really wonderful state. And I think you guys can feel at home. You feel at home in yourselves. Other people need a physical house to come home to. Like, you know, their hometown might feel like home or their house that lived in for 10 years might feel like home. Other people feel their home is in another human, right? Sometimes when, you know, people fall in love, they be like, you are my home, <laughs> stuff like that. I think you guys are really secure in your own self. You know, as long as you have yourself, your health, you feel at home in your own body. You guys could, I think, do really well living out of a backpack and traveling the world, that kind of thing. Really good. Feeling self-contained. But <laughs> here I think this is the, yeah, this is your one problem, if I can call it that. Of course, it's only a problem if this bothers you, but the Prince of Swords in your heart that's not great, right? We want the heart to be open and flowing and free and loving. And your heart isn't exactly blocked. It's more like it is skewed. It is skewed. Um, defensive, I just heard. The Prince of Swords it would be, the, you know, the Knight of Swords. Somebody who charges ahead really recklessly without um, thinking of the consequences. Really chasing what they're after. So on one level, you guys might do really well in getting into romantic relationships you know maybe you like one night stands maybe you have you know no problem asking somebody out that kind of thing but i think you're actually overcompensating for something that hurt you really 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 deeply in your past maybe it was in a past life so you're not even really aware of it but you can probably feel it that there is something you're protecting deep 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 buried in your heart that you are ignoring that you're pretending isn't there. Something you have almost, again, it doesn't really feel blocked to me. It feels like you've just cut it off. Like you're like, we're not even gonna go there. Maybe you've convinced yourself that you don't need romance. You don't need love. You're totally fine on your own. I mean, you are totally fine on your own. So that you don't, you don't necessarily need to fix this. This isn't, it's not something you need to fix. It's just, I think at some point in your life's journey, when you're kind of done partying, <laughs> you know, maybe it'll take, 10 years or so until you get to this point, but you'll start to feel bored, bored of your lifestyle, I think. And at some point you will want to share your life with someone. You'll want to have that experience of deep, unconditional love in a partnership. And so only when you get to that place, that's when you can work on this. That's when you'll need to slow right down um, really get present with where you are, especially getting present with the other person and 
reconnecting with this part of your heart that has been totally set aside. It's like, it's like there's an orphan part of your heart. <laughs> your heart has almost been orphaned because you have completely ignored it. That your, your need for love and your ability to give love, you've just taken that, put it in a box and put it over here. <laughs> and it's there. You can open that box and bring this part of yourself back to yourself whenever you want. Um, I just don't, I don't know when that's going to be for you. It doesn't feel like you're quite interested in that right now. And I mean, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. And I was really just drawn actually to this figure on this card. This Prince of Sword is got like puppet strings attached to these little people. Um, I don't think this is all of you. Maybe this is just one or two of you. If you have a tendency to string people along in romance or to manipulate people, not necessarily out of any, any kind of mean or evil way. Just have you ever found yourself lying to people or just keeping that at, at a distance just to keep them out of your way? <laughs> it's like, you just, you don't want to deal with them. You want to be free. You want to be able to do your own thing and you just want to keep people at arm's length. And so you might find yourself manipulating people, um, again, not in a really mean spirited way, just because that's the most expedient way to get people out of your way, that kind of thing. So <laughs> something to be aware of you, that's the kind of thing that tends to come and bite you in the ass. So I'm just raising that. I don't think that that's definitely not everybody, just a few of you. Um, if you are the puppet master, think about whether you want to continue being the puppet master. Okay, moving on up to your throat. Lust. <laughs> you guys are not shy. I mean, you might be introverts. You might be, you might like to keep your private affairs to yourself, but you're not shy when it comes to performing or to walking into a room. You, you guys are, you know, your throat, just think about what that, what that means. Think, just feel into your throat chakra is vibrating with lust, the frequency of lust. And that isn't just, you know, a sex thing. That is also just sens sensuality in general and a lot of confidence and wanting to feel comes back to, comes back to luxury. I keep thinking of Las Vegas. <laughs> Those of you this whole reading, I keep thinking of Rome and Vegas. So Sin City, that kind of vibe. This, you can really, I think you guys do, you already know this, you use that energy to your advantage. You probably are super charismatic, um, maybe not in a, in a regular kind of way, um, in your own unique way, in a maybe kind of mysterious way, people find themselves drawn to you. Maybe you don't even notice actually how many people are drawn to you. People are absolutely drawn to you because you have this kind of um, mysterious dark shimmer to you and people find that so attractive because you don't give off a negative vibe. You don't give off a like evil kind of vibe. You just give off a very comfortable in your own skin, very mysterious. And you, you feel to other people, you feel like you know things, you experience things, you know something about the human experience that they do not. They do not. You have been to the dark places of the human experience that other people don't even know exist. You, you have a more comprehensive experience of what it means to be human and then a lot of humans because you guys are not afraid to stick your nose into the shadows in fact you guys have done a lot of shadow work you've uh, you have had shadow lives and you are in this life you are integrating all of this so that you can be a whole being you know people um well i mean it's not just it's beings in the universe who have only ever lived as like happy little unconditionally loving cloud people. <laughs> you know, imagine just some kind of angelic type of being who have, like, you know, beings who have only ever experienced love and they've never experienced fear. They've never experienced pain. They've never experienced suffering. They've never experienced hate or envy or greed or lust or power or any of that. Lots of beings in the universe have 
only ever just been loving and free and floaty types of people. You have been a much more extreme type of person. And it brings me back to that Capricorn energy, that Luciferian energy of being a bright, bright, bright light, being the greatest of the archangels. Just think of the Luciferian archetype, being the brightest of the archangels, being the light bringer, being the morning star, and then going through the farthest fall going through the fall, going all the way, the descent all the way into darkness, but then making, having the redemption arc, coming back out of the abyss, just like the sea goat of Capricorn, coming all the way from the bottom of the abyss through the water, making the transition, coming back onto land and then climbing to the top of the tallest peak. You have been to from one extreme to the other extreme and then back again. You have seen the whole breadth of experience and that is what people love about you and they're obsessed about it actually <laughs> because you guys have had the whole experience that is what makes you guys so spe so so special and that is what you guys are learning right now is to how to integrate all of this how can you be a how do you how do you balance all these polarities how do you be both good and evil <laughs> how do you be both light and shadow how do you contain all of this and this is really 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 profound. This goes way beyond just any more little human thing. If you imagine like a source consciousness, right? Source consciousness is everything. Anything that humans like to label as evil or as dark or as black or as bad, that is just as much a part of source consciousness as good and light and love. Okay. Everything is source consciousness, but humans, humans are so polarized that they can only think in terms of good and evil and you are one of the beings who have really experienced the whole gambit and now you are trying to weave it all together to make sense of it how how you, how do you make sense of all of this how can you be everything <laughs> and i can't i mean i can't really explain the whole <laughs> answer of how you do that in this video because that's actually that's your project that's what you're here to do how do you integrate the totality of human experience and even more than that how do you integrate the totality of source consciousness that's how big of a deal this project is that you guys are on and it has spanned like millions of lifetimes this is uh yeah this is a project you guys embarked on so like way back in the primordial days of your consciousness in a higher dimension on a much higher level when you guys split off from source and you were like okay we're gonna embark on this massive project of experiencing extreme polarity and then you're going to eventually unify all of it you have experienced so much polarity but you will find unity you are figuring that out right now that is literally your purpose that is literally your job is to make sense of it all to find unity from the chaos so, <laughs> um, moving on to your third eye, power. Got a pyramid here and your crown chakra, prince of discs. Again, we have this kind of Saturnian vibe going on here. I don't know. I feel like my whole, I just had that whole rant <laughs> and I, I just was tuning into the like enormity of your project, the enormity of your consciousness. And I think anything I can say about these two cards would be very small in comparison to that. So I just want to, I'll just say, you know, your third eye is wide open. It is powerful. It is literally resonating with the frequency of power. If you guys are working on developing your psychic perception, all of your third eye stuff. I mean, it's all there. It's all there. You, you just, it's just waiting for the right moment for it to unlock. And it will, it will unlock slowly bit by bit, piece by piece as you continue on your journey, because the power is there. It's just, it'll, it'll happen. <laughs> Trust me, it'll happen when it is supposed to happen. And the crown shocker with the Prince of Discs, that would be the yeah, Knight of Pentacles. Interesting, because the Knight of Pentacles is typically a a slow kind of energy, but this doesn't look slow to me, right? This looks like a chariot. This is like some kind of um, 
underworld being riding this chariot. So <sighs> whenever I see a like person card, like one of the one of the court cards in the crown, to me that always feels like that this is more representative of the beings who are communicating with you through your crown chakra. So I think you are getting a, a steady drip, <laughs> a steady drip of information down through your crown. Um, for it to be this discs, this prince of discs, this earth energy, I think you guys are very connected in with various um, kind of earth realm spirits inner earth possibly too it just made me think you know some people think that we need what like channeling has to take place like that we we don't we can only channel um like you know some people will channel angels some people channel higher dimensional beings but we can also channel trees and i actually just saw a video of this is there's an astrologer i like i think his channel is esoteric healing He's done a video, video where he channeled coffee. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe, maybe this is a message for some of you, knowing that you can channel, you because you have all of this earth energy, um, and you can channel things on the earthly plane, and that is just as awesome as channeling, you know, a 12th dimensional being. You guys can channel coffee beans. You guys can channel a pizza. You can channel a tree. You can deconstruct a cheeseburger down to its source. <laughs> you, you can... I think you're here to receive messages about the earthly realm. And I think that goes back to your whole project of finding the unifying experience of all of this polarity. You will do that mostly by tuning into the human experience and the earth project and Maybe that is why, actually, if you guys are feeling, you feel frustrated sometimes that you're, you feel like your third eye is powerful because it is, but maybe you're not, you know, getting the kind of clairvoyant insights that you wish you were, but it's because that, that's actually irrelevant for you. You're getting exactly the kind of psychic perception that is relevant for you. And for you, what is most relevant, what is literally part of your project is to be tuning into earthly things. So it might not be that relevant for you guys to be, you know, seeing angels, just as an example. <laughs> it is more relevant for you guys to be literally looking at the trees outside your window or to be looking at the humans passing by. You are here to be dealing with the human experience. And that is another reason why you enjoy it so much. Why you like to... I mean, I don't necessarily think that you think being a human is that great or that your life has always been that great, but there's definitely a... You know how to revel in the senses, in the senses of the human body, all of the various human experiences, all of the sensory perception that our human body has. You guys can really revel in that and you can find the things to enjoy in it. Yeah, so I think just the final, the final message here is don't let spiritual types, you know, new agey types make you feel that reveling in the human experience is any less spiritual than sitting on a beach in Bali or sitting, being a monk meditating on in Tibet, right? <laughs> if you came here to revel in the human experience, then that is what you came here to do. And that is every bit as divine. That is every bit as spiritual. That is every bit as missioned and purposed and part of the great experience of source consciousness as anything else. So, <laughs> you know, it, don't let anybody feel like you are less spiritual or less advanced or less evolved than anybody else because of the things that you enjoy. If you enjoy it, you enjoy it for a reason. So go for it. <laughs> and... Yeah, I think that's the end of your guys' messages. So thank you so much for tuning in and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.